Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be taking a look at music generation, but specifically doing it in the browser with Transformer JS. So first we're going to take a look at the demo that they put together, and then we'll actually learn how to implement it into something like JS. With that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look at the music gen uh, implementation with Transformer JS and actually just see the demo that they put together. So this is on their Hugging Face Spaces, and they released a post about this a, a few days ago. Um, might even been a couple weeks ago. But basically, the the way that this works is you, you have a series of buttons. You can pick your duration and guidance, and you can actually just kind of type in a prompt of what kind of music you want to generate. So the first thing to note is that this is already loaded. If I refresh, it takes, it's really quick to load the models. Um, it may be a little slower when you do it the first time. The second time it's it's caching, so it's it's pretty quick. You can actually see that in the uh, network tab when we go in and we actually look at WASM right here. So we'll go ahead and do a refresh again, and we'll just see it being loaded. And this is our the, the Onyx runtime that it's loading in. And so now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to have it generate by default, and we'll see uh, how long this takes. All right. And so now it's finished, and we're going, it's uh, finishing generating right here, and we're going to uh, test it out. Just note that uh, I paused the video. It probably took about a minute to maybe a minute and 30 seconds to generate about 10 seconds of audio. Um, and then... Let's And there we have it. We have our 10 seconds of audio for our uh, music generation. Again, this is all being done for free. You're loading the model uh, into the, the front end, so it doesn't cost you anything to go uh, hit any kind of open source. It doesn't cost you anything for the back end. You're literally doing all this in the client. Um, so there is some initial load time, but the, uh, the fact that it's, it's able to be done in the client is really impressive. Again, it's using WASM. In an upcoming video, we'll probably go through WebGPU, which is a way that we're seeing like these uh, latency um, kind of becoming a little more obsolete. They're, they're way, way faster. So um, again, the fact that this is happening in the browser and happening for free is super cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and break this down and figure out how did they actually put this together? One of the things to note is if you go and look at the, uh, the files here, um, they're, compiled to, they're compiled down. So you can't really see the, the code too much. Uh, but what we can do is we can actually look at the model that they used and figure out an example of how to do it. So if you come in here to the activity page and you scroll down to uh, the models section, you can find the music gen small. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, take this model and we're actually going to build out an example. So if we go in here, we can actually see how we're going to set up our application. And they even give us a code snippet for how to do that. So in the next steps, we're going to be uh, implementing this into Next.js. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. We also have an upcoming course on white labeling GPTs. So if you're interested in that, please sign up below. And with that, let's get back to it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to the spaces and look at the files. Um, even though these files aren't uh, totally usable, there's a couple of interesting things. One, you can actually still get the HTML. But the other thing is you can actually see the readme, uh, and it has the models in there. So we're going to just clone this uh, as a good practice. You can click clone repository, and then just go ahead and copy this. And that's how we're going to start our, uh, our uh, IDE. So I've already done this, and we're going to jump into um, uh, VS Code in a second. The other thing is you need to pay attention to this NPM package. So 
This is a little bit different than how you would normally do the NPM install for transformers. You'll notice that it has this version three or V3. So we're, uh, after we've cloned, which is the project I have right here, we're going to go ahead and do a couple of things with NPM. So the first thing I did was do an NPM init, and that gives me this package.json. And the reason for that is I, I just want to track what packages I'm installing. So now we'll go back and we'll get the NPM uh, transformers v3. And we just go ahead and copy here. We go back, we'll just run our npm install. Cool, and so after that ran, uh, I just wanna point out again that this package version is a little bit different because we're actually doing this v3 here. So it's not like a semantic versioning necessarily. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our uh, index a module file, just as like an example of how we would do this in JavaScript. So we're gonna go back and look at our code. So if we come in here, we know that we're going to have this uh, transformers. So we wanna copy this and just kind of look at it in our ID. So we'll just kind of see our example. So we wanna import, uh, and then also you'll notice down here it has this import uh, for generating a wave file. Just because we're only doing this in JavaScript, we're, um, we're actually going to generate this wave file, wave file so we have an actual result. So if I go into my file, what I've done is I've already imported the, the statements. So now that I, for both the audio and for the uh, the auto tokenizer and the music generation for content or for conditional generations. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our token, uh, the load in the tokenizer and the model itself. So again, we're looking at this specific model. We found that in the readme, but we also found it in uh, the models on their uh, hugging face page. We're defining what this model is, we're pre-training it, and then we're actually passing in some variables based on the encoding right here. So if you look back at the example, we have these um, we have these different buttons for temperature uh, and all the, the different prompts. And so these are the things that we're trying to account for when we're looking at our configurations, like encoding, and these are important for how we're actually generating. So let's keep going. And if we look at now what we're doing is we're building out our prompt. So our prompt here would actually should be the text that's going in the input field. And then we're taking those inputs into, um, and we're actually creating chunks essentially of our audio. So this audio is gonna be generated. This is why we're doing a spread uh, operator on our input and so that we can pass all the object or all the data in. Uh, we're going to say our max new tokens is 500. We're sampling and we have our guidance uh, scale. And this is actually enough to generate the audio. However, just so we can see a good result, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the wave file so that we can actually generate this. So the only other piece that we haven't done an NPM on is this NPM wave file. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. So if we do NPM, uh, let me clear this so it's better. NPM I-S wave file, and that'll save it to our package. So now we should have everything that we need in order to run this, and we'll see what is actually happening in our output. So if we go ahead and we just do node, oops, node index, and we'll just do our module file, we'll start seeing the result. Probably pause part of the video because it'll take a second for us to actually generate the wave file. 
All right, so I ended up using my, my actual terminal, um, but you can see this is the output that it's giving. Uh, I'll try and make that a little bigger. Um, and then based on all this information, it's actually concatting, and you can now see we have a music gen .wav file. And this is coming from this file sync uh, where we're taking the buffer from the wave scratch and actually uh, creating a file from it. So let's go ahead and just give it a quick test. And now we have our nine seconds of music gen uh, directly in the web. So this is all in JavaScript. Even though we did it through our CLI, you could actually connect this file into your HTML specifically in order to build out uh, the same implementation that we had that they have over here. So if you wanted to put in your input fields and then create buttons to change what that would be, and then your scales and as, as well as a button. So again, all of this can happen in the browser. That's one of the coolest things about it. Um, you know, another easy way to do this is to, to use it directly on Hugging Face. Um, but now you have a way to also implement it into your applications. All right, that's it for us today. Again, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please remember to do so. Today, what we covered was specifically looking at music generation and how do you actually use AI in the browser to do so? We then did a quick implementation so that we can build on top of this. And with that, happy nerding.